Now, let's continue with the recording activity. So, as you know that the first step in analyzing the transaction, we need to identify which event that we should record. And then the next step is to journalize the transaction. So journalize the transactions means that we're going to record the transaction into the journal, okay? And then a the next step, we're going to pause this to the lecture, prepare the trial balance, and so on. We're going to learn all of these steps through our um, accounting principles one. So for the recording process, first, we need to an analyze the transaction. There would be a lot of economic events and you need to analyze which economic events that we should record and which one that we will not record, okay? So for example, some economic event like um, the company hire the secretary, that one we should not record. Or uh, the customer walk into the shop and look at the products and then walk out of the shop. So those, event, we should not record it. And then the next uh, step is to enter the transaction in the journal and then transfer the journal information to the lecture accounts, okay? So we have analyze the transaction, enter or we record the transaction in the journal and then we transfer the journal information to the lecture accounts. Now we talk about the journal. So what is the journal? A journal is just like uh, the book in the company that keep tracks of all the um, transactions or the business transactions. We call it a book of original entry. It's like a diary that you keep track of all the activities, all the economic events of the companies. So the transaction recorded in chronological order. Now, what does it mean by chronological order? It means that you should record the transaction um, in an order. For example, on January 1, okay, the company buys something, and then January 2nd, the company sells some inventory. January 3, uh, the company received the money from the customer. So it should be in order, January 1, January 2, January 3. You should not record um, you know, uh, the, the transaction that already happened in the past, all right, uh, you know, to the, the current one, because uh, it's not in the order. And uh, for the recording process, the journal help us to show the complete effects of a transaction. So it will show us how a transaction influenced to debit and credit and which account that the transaction influenced to. It provide a chronological record of the transaction. It means it show the order of the transaction. Okay, show the order of the transaction. And uh, it's helped to prevent uh, all located errors. So if you see that in the journal, debit amounts are not equal to credit amounts. So you will know that there should be some um, errors and you will go back and check it, okay? All right, so this is how your journal look like. So we have a general journal. We have J1 at the top of the journal. So J1 is mean journal, case number one. Date, we have the first column is the date. And then we have second column, account titles and explanation. Next column is reference. And then we have debit and credit. 
So let's read the first illustration. On September 1, Rainier invested 15,000 cash in the business and SoftBuy purchased uh, computer equipment for 7,000 cash. All right, so when we read this transaction, the first thing we need to do is to analyze uh, which accounts will be affected. So we have cash, right? Because Rainier invested uh, Rainier invested 15,000 cash in the business. So first of all, we know that um, cash will be affected. Okay, cash will be affected. Cash increase. Okay, so we have cash increase by 15,000. And we have owner's capital increase by 15,000, okay, owner's capital cash increases and owner's capital also increases, all right? So when cash increase, uh, we're going to debit cash, okay? We're going to debit cash. So we debit cash um, 15,000 and when owner's capital increase, we credit owner's capital 15,000, okay? Remember, cash is an asset. When assets increase, we debit. Owner's capital, when owner's capital increase, owner's equity increase, and when owner's equity increase, we credit. Now, the next transaction is that soft buy purchase computer equipment for uh, 7,000 cash, okay? So the company buy equipment, right? So we have equipment increase 7,000. Now equipment is an asset. When assets increase, we debit. So we debit equipment 7,000. And because we pay cash, right? So your cash will decrease. And cash is an asset. When assets decrease, we credit. Okay, so we credit 7,000 here. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Uh, let me erase this. Okay, the next one is that uh, but, Butler's shipping purchases a delivery truck costing 14,000. It pays 8,000 cash now and agrees to pay the remaining 6,000 on account. Okay, so the company buy a truck, a delivery truck. Now a truck can be classified as motor vehicle for SS or it can be classified as equipment, okay? so. In this case, we can use equipment. So when the company buy a truck, okay, equipment increase, right? Equipment increase. Okay, so I have equipment increases and it pay money. So my cash decrease and um, it didn't pay all the money, so there will be some debt. So my accounts payable will increase, okay? So first you need to read and then you need to translate into the account involved and then you will identify whether this increase or decrease. All right, so we're going to put here Equipment increases, it means assets increase. So when assets increase, we we um debit. Okay, so we debit assets. So we debit equipment fourteen thousand, and when we pay cash, um assets decrease. So we will credit cash for 8,000. And the eight, 
the 6,000 remaining, we still owe them on account. So it will increase our accounts payable. This means we owe them the money. Uh, so we will credit accounts payable 6,000. Accounts payable credit because when the debt increase, it means liability increase. And liability are on the right side of accounting equation. So when it increase, we credit. Okay, now after we record, um, after we record the transaction in the journal, then we need to pass it to the lecture, okay? We need to pass it to the lecture. So what is the lecture? The lecture is like um, the things that we keep the records of the accounts. Okay, so whether the accounts increase, decrease, uh, and the changes in the accounts balances. So we, we want to keep track of those things in the accounts, we call it a lecture. So the lecture is look like this, okay? This is called the standard form of the lecture accounts. And we have so many different accounts in the companies. So for SS account, we have cash, supplies, equipment, land, liability accounts, we have note payable, accounts payable, salary and wages payable, interest payable. Each of them, we're going to have a lecture. And next we have um, owner's capital, owner drawing, service revenue, salary and wages expense. So each of them also have a lecture, okay? So the lecture, is have two types. One is called a standard form of account. So it will look like this. So we have cash account. Uh, the right side, the right side corner, you can see that number 101 is the account number. And we have the day explanation. Normally you don't write anything in the explanation. For the reference, normally you will write uh, journal and the page. So journal page one. And then we have debit, credit, and the balance. So the lecture will show us what happened on each day for that accounts. For example, on June 1, we debit cash 25,000 and we have a cash balance of 25,000. And you also can find out how much is the cash balance at the end of each day or the accounts balance, okay? So June 17, my account balance for cash is 17,000. Another type of the lecture, we call it T account, okay, T account. So the T account is has the name in the top of the account. And also it has um, the left column and the right column, okay. So the left side is debit and the right side is credit. This one we call it T account, okay? T account. So lecture have two, two types. One is called the standard form of the account, okay? The standard form of the account. Another type is T account like this. So normally if the question didn't say anything, you will use the standard form of the accounts. It means um, this six columns. So we have day, explanation, reference, debit, credit, balance, okay? But if the question say prepare a T accounts, then we, you will use this T account, okay? So the good things of the T account is, is faster, but the bad things is that we cannot find out the balance of the account every day, okay, in each day. So let's look at this um, transaction. So just now when the owner invests 15,000 cash in the business, so we debit cash 15,000 and we credit owner's capital 15,000. Now, remember that for the reference column, 
uh, the number 101 and 301 uh, is, is the account numbers, okay? Account numbers. And you will get it from the uh, lecture, okay? Or the question will give it to you, all right? And then um, you will see that for the credit account owner's capital, uh, when you record it in the journal, you need to indent it to the right, okay? Indent it to the right. And remember, we don't write dollar sign or currency inside the journal, okay? We don't put any currency inside the journal. And the account that we debit, we will always write it first. And the account that we credit, we will do it after that, okay? And after we record the transaction in the journal, then we will pause this to the lecture. So here you can see that we will pause uh, 15,000 cash to the cash lecture by debit 15,000 here, and the balance is 15,000. And for owner's capital, you will credit owner capital for 15,000 and the balance is 15,000. Now you will observe that um, for the general lecture, uh, we have J1. J1 here, the reference, is mean the journal, is come from journal page number one, okay? And for the reference in the journal 101 and 301, is, they are these account number, okay? They are the account numbers. Okay, so let's um summarizing about the recording process. So first, when you read the transaction, you should analyze whether you should record it or not. Okay, there's some economic transaction that we don't record, some economic events that we don't record. And second, after you determine that you will uh, record the transaction, then you need to determine what type of account is involved. Okay, so is it an asset? Is it a liability? Or is it an owner equity? Is it cash equipment or account receivable? And then you determine what items will increase or decrease and by how much. Then you translate the increase and decrease into uh, debits and credits. Okay, now let's look at the first transaction here. So on October 1, C. Albert invests 10,000 cash in an advertising company called uh, Yazichi Advertising. Okay, so the owner invests um, 10,000 cash in an advertising company. So they open an advertising company. And this company is Yazichi Advertising. So when the owner invests money in the business, so cash increase, right? Cash increase by 10,000 and owner's capital increase by 10,000. So when cash increase 10,000, we're going to debit cash 10,000 in the journal. And when uh, owner's capital increased by 10,000, remember owner's capital? When owner's capital increase, owner's equity will increase. And when owner's equity increase, we credit. Okay, so we debit cash and we credit owner's capital. Now let's look at October 1. On October 1, Yazichi purchased uh, office equipment costing 5,000 by signing a three month 12% uh, 5,000 note payable. So when they buy an equipment, okay, um, the equipment will increase, right? Equipment increase. And did they pay the money when they buy the equipment? No. They sign a note. 
So when the company sign a note, when they sign a note, it means they borrow money. So they borrow money on a note for um, 5,000. Okay, so sign a note here. Sorry. Sign a note here is mean borrow money. Okay, they borrow money. The three month note, it means um, they're going to borrow the money in three months. So after three months, they will pay back the money. 12% here is mean 12% interest rate per year. Okay, 12% interest rate per year. So um, when they buy equipment, equipment will increase. And because they borrow money, note table will increase. Okay, so note table increase. So how do we record this? Equipment increase 5,000. Equipment is an asset. And when assets increase 5,000, we debit assets for 5,000. Okay. Notes payable increase 5,000. So note payable is a liability. When liability increase, we credit. So we credit notes payable for 5,000. So after we record it in the journal, then we process to the lecture. So we will debit equipment 5,000, credit note payable 5,000. Now let's look at the next one, October 2. On October 2, um, Yazichi received uh, 1,200 cash for advertising services that are expected to be completed by December 31. So um, Yazichi, he received money, right? He received money. And the money is 1,000 cash. So Yazichi company received the money for a service that they haven't done yet, okay? Remember, Yazichi company is an, a company that provide advertising services. So they haven't done the service yet to the customer because here it say the service are expected to be completed by December 31. Okay, so they haven't provided the service yet. Okay, they haven't provided the service yet. Okay. So we have a new account when the company has not provided the service. And it is called uh, unearned service revenue. Unearned service revenues. So unearned service revenue we use when the company receives cash from the customer in advance before providing the service. We call it unearned service revenue. And unearned service revenue is a liability because it shows that we owe the customer a service. This means we need to do for them in the future. For example, uh, company A received $1,000 cash from customer okay for computer repairing service that I don't know for the cleaning service okay let's say for the cleaning service 
that company A will provide at the end of the month. Okay, this is um on let's say on August one, company A received one thousand dollar cash from company from customer B for the cleaning service that company A will provide at the end of the month. So on August 1, company A receive, okay, it's received the money in advance. In advance is mean they haven't provided any service yet, okay? And they will provide the service at the end of the month. So in this case, we will use the account unearned service revenue, okay? Unearned service revenue. So unearned service revenue, it means the company already received the money from the customer, um, but they haven't provided the, the service to the customer yet. And they owe them the service in the future, okay? So this is our liabilities. So what is the difference between unearned service revenue and service revenues? Unearned for service revenue is happen when the company already perform the service to the customer. Okay. And service revenue is under owner's equity okay this will be under owner's equity it will increase owner equity right so in this case we will use a new account called unearned service revenues now let's get back to our slides so in this case um the company already received 1,000 cash for advertising service. So our cash will increase by 1,200. And then we haven't performed the service yet to the customer. So we owe them a service. So it means unearned, uh, unearned service revenue increased by 1,200. Okay. So for the journal entry, because cash increased 1,200, Cash is on the left side of accounting equation, right? Cash is belong to assets. So when cash increase, we debit. And unearned revenue is belong to liability. And this is on the right side of accounting equation. So when unearned service revenue increase, we credit. So we debit cash 1,200 and we credit unearned revenue. 1,200. Then we pause this to the lecture. On October 3, Yaziji pay office rent for October in cash of 900. Okay, so we have an office rent expense. We have a rent expense. So Yaziji pay the rent expense for cash. For 900. So when Yaziji pay money, right? Pay money, cash will decrease. Cash will decrease. And expand will increase. We have rent expand increase 900. Now, when rent expand increase, you remember when expand increase, owner equity will decrease. And when owner equity decrease, um, we will debit it. Okay, we debit it. So we debit when expand 900. And when cash decrease, cash belong to assets. When assets decrease, we credit. So we credit cash 900. And then we pause it to the lecture. This is T account lecture. On October 4, Yasichi pay 600 for uh, 
one year insurance policy that will expire next year on September 30. So Yazi G pays 600. So in this case, cash decrease, right? Cash decrease by 600. Now Yazi G pay for insurance, for one year insurance, but it pay for one year ahead of time. It means it will expire on September 30. So Yazi G just pay money to buy the insurance and it has not used the insurance expense yet, okay? So in this case, we have a new account. This is called prepay insurance, prepay insurance, or we call it prepay expense, okay? What is prepay expense? So prepay expense we use this when we pay for some expenses in advance. It's mean that um we pay for some expenses before we use this. For example, uh, prepay rent or prepay insurance. So you remember when you go to rent a house, right? They always ask you to pay for uh, three months or six months ahead of time. So that is called paying for the rent in advance, okay? So we call it prepay rent. Or if we pay for one year insurance in advance, we call it prepay insurance. So this prepay rent or insurance or interest, we call it prepay expense. Okay, we call it prepay expense. Okay, it means that we we pay for the expenses, but we haven't used it yet, okay? So those prepaid expenses, they are assets. They are assets. Why? Because we haven't used them yet, okay? And it will bring you benefit in the future. It will bring the benefits to the company in the future. So the prepaid expense, they belong to assets. They are assets, okay? So when we pay for the insurance for one year in advance, we have prepay insurance, prepay insurance, and it is an asset. So let's go back to uh, slides. So when Yaziji pay for uh, 600 one year insurance, so we have prepay insurance increase. Okay, this is an asset because it represents the benefits, the benefit of insurance that the company will receive in the future. And cash decreased by 600. So here we have cash uh, decreased by 600 and prepaid insurance increased by 600. So when prepaid insurance Increase by 600, we debit, okay, because it's a, it is an asset. When assets increase, we debit. When cash decrease by 600, so cash is an asset. When assets decrease, we credit. So we credit cash for 600. So now we pause this into the lecture. So by uh, debit. We pay insurance 600 and credit cash 600. On October 5, Yaziji purchased um, a three month supply of advertising materials on account from Aero Supply for 2,500. So when they buy supplies, Okay, supplies is an asset. We have supplies increase 2,500. And because they buy it on accounts, this means we haven't paid money yet, okay? So the company has not paid money yet. So we have um, accounts payable increase 2,500, okay? Accounts payable increases 2,500. So supplies increase, supplies is an asset. And when assets increases, 
2,500. We will debit supplies, 2,500. And accounts payable, accounts payable um, is a liabilities. So when liability increases 2,500, we will credit accounts payable 2,500. And then we pause this to the lecture. All right, now on October 9, Yasichi hires four employees to begin work on October 15. Each employee is to receive a weekly salary of 500. Okay, so when Yazichi hires uh, four employees to begin work on October 15, uh, this transaction will not have any journal entry. We don't record it. It's because the four employees will start to work on October 15 and we will pay them salary after they work for a week. So on October 9, we just hire the four employees. Okay, Yazichi company just hires four employees. So there is no, no transaction here, okay? It's no transaction here. Okay, October 20, C.R. Bird is the owner of the company. He withdraw 500 cash for personal use. So when the owner withdraw money for personal use, we will have the owner drawing account increase. So owner drawing accounts increase 500. And because cash in the company decreases, so cash account decreases by 500. So owner drawings, owner drawings, when it increase, um, owner's equity will decrease. And so when owner's drawing increases, we will debit, okay? We debit owner's drawing. And cash, cash is an asset. When cash decrease 500, it means assets decrease. And when assets decrease, we credit. So we debit owner's drawings, 500, and we credit cash, 500. And so we pause this to the lecture. October 26th, Yazichi owes employee salaries of 4,000 and pay them in cash, okay? So Yazichi owes employee salary of 4,000 and pay them in cash. Uh, so remember on October 9, Yazichi hired four employees and then they start to work on October 15. And then after that, they're going to receive the salary for every week, okay, that they work. So now October 26, we need to pay them salary. So the company pay the salary to uh, the employees, 4,000, okay, 4,000. So salary and wages expense increased by 4,000. And because we pay the money, so Yazichi company cash will decrease by 4,000. Now salary and wages expense, um, it increases when it increases it will decrease the owner equity. And when owner's equity decrease, we debit. So we're going to debit salary and wages expand here, 4,000. Cash, cash belong to assets. So when cash decrease, assets decrease. When assets decrease, we credit, okay? And next, on October 31, Yazichi received 10,000 in cash from Koba Company for advertising services performed in October. So on October 31, Yazichi received money from another company 
because YCG already performed the service to that company. So cash increased by 10,000 and service revenue increased by 10,000. So cash is an asset. When assets increase 10,000, we debit cash 10,000. Service revenue increases is will increase the owner equity. And when owner equity increase, we credit. So we credit owners, sorry, we credit service revenue for 10,000. And then we pause it to the lecture. So these are the journal entries we just did it, okay? So you see the date, it is in chronological order. The account titles here, references, references include the account numbers, debit and credit. You see that the accounts that for credit, it will be indented to the right. So these are all the accounts that we just recorded. And then these are the standard form of the general lecture. Okay, so after we record the journal entry, we will post the journal entries into the lectures here. And the number in red color, that are, they, they are these, um, ending account balance of each account, okay? They are these ending balance of each account. And then we will use those ending balance to prepare the trial balance, okay? So the trial balance look like this. This has the name of the company, the name, date, uh, debit and credit columns, now we have the list of account on the left side. So the list of accounts are in order. So you will see assets account come first, cash, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, and then there will be um, liabilities account like notes payable, accounts payable, unearned service revenue. Now remember, it's this liability. And the rest are owner's equity account, okay? And then you will post the ending balance, okay? Where did you get it? Again, in the from the general lecture, okay? General lecture, the ending balance is here. The red color, you post that into the trial balance. And then the total debit should be equal to total credit, okay? Total debit should be equal to total credit then you might be correct. If it's not equal, then there may be some problems and you need to go back and check it. There are some limitation of the trial balance. Sometimes the trial balance balance, but you may double record a transaction, okay? Or um, you forgot to record one transaction, it's still balanced. Or a correct journal entry is not posted, okay? You forget the pauses. Um, the, the trial balance is still balanced. Uh, and sometimes incorrect accounts are used in journalizing or posting, but it still give you an equal amount of total debit and credit. So this is the limitation of the trial balance. Sometimes we, we just... um may not recognize some errors, okay? So uh, in that case, we may need to prepare the statement or uh, look at the accounts carefully to find out the errors. So the error may come from mathematical mistake or you incorrect posting or you, um, understanding the, the, the transaction differently. Okay, remember, don't put the currency size inside the journal or lecture. The currency size, you can use this in the trial balance or financial statement. All 
Okay, so that is the end of this chapter. Um, and we'll see you in other comments.